Yo guys, kind of feel off today. I don't know why. I woke up weird. Like, like I feel, I feel like I have that weird motion thing when you're sick, but I have no other symptoms. It's weird. But either way, we're talking about Marcus Garrett and Marcus Garrett from my school. K U. He's a Kansas Jayhawk, Rock Chalk Jayhawk baby, and he was a stud last year. I don't know if you guys remember. Shout out to the Miami Herald for writing a great piece. But last year. He averaged 11 points on 65.4% shooting from the field. He shot 17 of 26 field goals, and he was 3 of 7 from downtown, 43% on threes last year while averaging 6 rebounds, 1.5 assists, 3.3 steals, and almost a block per game last year. That earned him a two-way deal. And then you guys were like, what happened to him? He only played in like 10 games last year for the Heat, and he his numbers weren't pretty. It was actually... he suffered an injury back in college and he had instability in his right wrist so he underwent season ending wrist surgery and was waived by the heat so they could use their two-way contract on somebody else but he rehabbed with the heat and was stayed around the team so he's basically been around the team for seven months and he came out and he was awesome. He had, what, 13 points, three rebounds, three assists. He hit a three-pointer. He, he played fantastic defense. And I truly believe Marcus Garrett is the next guy to break out for the Miami Heat. Okay, Everyone's going to be like, where did Marcus Garrett come from? This guy was Defensive Player of the Year. Okay, well, I, didn't he almost won National Player of the Year? Or did he win National Player of the Year? I completely forgot. He literally went, he's 6'5", with like a huge wingspan. I think it's almost 6'10". Yeah, he was Defensive Player of the Year. Second team all big... 12 and then the year before 13 all big 12 all right guy was a stud and in his last year at ku he shot 34.8 percent from three averaged 11 points and he's a guy who almost averaged two steals a game in college and is able to dish the rock okay he's a guy who averaged five assists a game almost he's a guy who can easily give you four or five assists he's more of a shooting guard than a point guard but he can guard one through three and the best part about him is he's like 210 pounds six foot five I've always loved Marcus Garrett's game because the one thing holding him back because he's great at attacking the rim. Okay, he's a great, you know, he's got a six foot ten wingspan on a six foot five frame. He's like two hundred and ten pounds, and the thing is, is he's able to go coast to coast with ease, and he. He's always been a fantastic finisher at the rim. A guy inside the arc, he's a great scorer. It was literally like if he got a jump shot, he's a fantastic NBA player. And he goes to the Miami Heat, a team that is going to figure it out for him. If there's any team that will make it work for you, it's the Miami Heat. If you catch their eye and they like you, whoop baby, you're good to go because they love those types of cats. Okay, you know what type of cat Marcus Garrett is? The type of cat that they love. I'm like, not even kidding like truly believe this so this is where i want to hear your guys thoughts down below what do you guys think of this entire situation and i really do think he'll fit in perfect because like let's look at the heat roster he's a shooting guard he can play point guard if needed and he also could play small forward at the wing position if needed i know now basketball is braced basically three positions guards forwards and you can also call forwards wings but guards forwards slash wings and centers but if you look at this current roster, we're Jimmy, Bam, Kyle, Duncan, Victor, Caleb, Tyler, Dwayne, Dedman, Nicole, like Jovic, he could have an impact. I don't really, th I think he's behind Struess, Gabe, Vincent, and the young guys on this roster are Jovic, Jovic, sorry, Jovic, and Orlando Robinson are going to be the two young guys on this team. And I, I do believe that Marcus Garrett could be the back, you know, the third point guard behind kyle lowry and gabe vincent and then you know the shooting guard position is going to be tyler hero and victor oladipo and i think marcus garrett could be the third guy there for both guard positions and be quite an asset for them and like i truly think he can be like really good and he can make a good impact for the team i just think he's kind of underrated entirely he's a good player and that's where i want to hear your opinions if you guys are on the same page or if i'm just overzealous about this guy and He's not as good as I'm saying. I think I'm right, though. I'm I think I'm 100% right that he's going to be the guy that breaks out. This year's Max Struess, Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincent, Omer, year to seven. All the fun guys that we got to see in the last two years that they've pulled out their ass. And we've been like, where did this guy come from? Again, they did it again. The Miami Heat. How can they keep developing guys like this? We don't understand it. And... Surely it's because 
the evaluation of talent on their part is incredible okay just such a good job at evaluating talent understanding what is going to have success in the modern nba and personally that's why i think they have all the success that they do i know somebody else is just going to be like it's pat riley that's all pat riley but it's, i think it's a whole team effort it's eric spolstra these other assistant coaches like chris quinn why do you think chris quinn was getting head coaching offers because of this like the miami heat just evaluate and discover talent like second to none second to none and that's like the most impressive part about this is like how good they became at like evaluating talent and again it goes back to the thought that second to none and i think that's i think that's the most impressive part about it is when you look at it this is a team that arguably has went from being a super team to having to find guys like Hassan Whiteside. Nobody would have thought Hassan Whiteside was going to be what he became. And then the Miami Heat did that and Hassan Whiteside got paid a boatload of money. Like Hassan Whiteside was averaging like 20 and 15 almost or was. Like Hassan Whiteside was arguably like thought of as a top 5 center and if that had started a few years earlier Hassan Whiteside in a different in the generation before this one would have probably been a Hall of Famer, maybe. Is that that's a hot take? That's a hot take, but like they really got him going, okay? If you know what I'm saying, like, dude, they were they were geniuses, and they continue. And it's really Pat Riley who's the genius. If we really want to give anyone the credit that deserves credit, it's it's obviously Pat Riley. But I'm gonna still stick by the thought that. I mean, I just think about it every time. You're just like, Pat Riley, you are a, you're just a savvy, savvy guy. And I, don't know, I really hope that Marcus Garrett gets his shot that he rightfully deserves. Because right? in my opinion, I think he truly fits in this team. And he could be, if an injury happens to you know, Kyle Lowry, Gabe Vincent, or Victor Oladipo, or Tyler Hero, I'm telling you. He's going to be the guy that pops off and people are going to be like, they did it again. They found somebody else. He's been in the system for two years. Um, just wait, it's going to happen. And I think this is a team that people are going to be counting out. So I want to hear your thoughts down below. Are you guys on the same page about me as Marcus Garrett? I actually just milked this to eight minutes and I'm actually very proud of myself that I did that. So suck my dick. Yeah. Supposedly you're supposed to make videos to eight minutes. I never do it on YouTube, but supposedly it's good. It's better than my four minute videos. So I'm trying it today.